talking about the first half of OU's win over a bad UTEP team. We, we, we knew that UTEP was overmatched entering this game. We knew that the Miners struggled last year, and forecast was that we're going to do the same again this year. And, you know, despite it being 7-7 um, early on after the center defense, uh, you know, got run gaps a, a, a few times, you know, probably out of position, and you give UTEP credit for scoring on that initial drive. It was all Sooners after that. And we got to begin offensively. We're talking about Baker Mayfield. And, yeah, you talk about those first 16 passes. They were all completions. In fact, he ended up 19 of 20. His QB rating was well over 250 in the contest. But what impressed me the most about Baker, and I know it's against UTEP, not a very good defense, and of course next week he'll be tested big time against that Ohio State front seven and probably won't have as much time to throw. I was really impressed with Baker's um, overall patience. I was impressed um, by him not rushing into things like he did last year in the opener against Houston, you know, throwing some ill advised passes, but really, you know, not thinking about his progression. Basically, you know, he was cool in the pocket. You know, he made sure that the passes that he threw were going to be on target. And, again, if that meant holding on the ball a little bit longer, hey, that's fine. You know, the thing was I thought he showed incredible poise, and that's a big reason why he had the day that he had. Of course, the offensive line, you know, those guys, you know, anchored by Orlando Brown, um, they had one heck of a game not only, you know, protecting Baker, but also, too, in run blocking, you know, straight blocking and pull blocking. Um, you saw on that first drive, Abdul Adams, who was the starting tailback today, uh, get involved with, you know, nickling and diming to death that minor defense and also, you know, caught at least one pass out of the backfield for a big game. So, you know, whatever um, Baker did today, it was basically a give and take process. You know, UTEP gave him a lot and trust me, Mayfield took it. And that really included the tight ends over the middle. I mean, we saw Mark Andrews have one heck of a first half. He was very active and even his backup, you know, uh, Grant Calcatra, um, he got a touchdown in this game as well. In fact, quite a few Sooners scored a touchdown today. And when the Sooners got inside the red zone, we saw them, you know, go with the bigger backs, including um, Rodney Anderson. You know, Anderson, by the way, didn't get hurt <laughs> this time from what I could tell. Um, he looked good, too. In fact, you know, they went running back by committee, which we said would most likely be the case from our weekly matchup show earlier in the week. You know, we'd see, you know, Marcellia Sutton. We'd see Trey Sermon. We would see... Um, uh, we'd also see Dimitri Flowers as well. He got a touchdown. And, of course, we saw Abdul Adams in the beginning and Rodney Anderson uh, later on. We also saw, too, some big playability and Jeff Bidette, who did not get the start today, but uh, he had some big catches, too, including the acrobatic catch that he had, you know, leveling ball but holding on um, at the minor five and then the Sooners punching in after that. Um, UTEP did not make it too easy on OU as far as field position in that first half, but we saw at least a couple of drives for OU go at 85, 90 yards. So the Sooners, when they had to, drove it the length of the field. In fact, it was an almost 700-yard total offensive day for the Sooners at 676. And, again, the game was put away early, 35-7. Um, they untaped Baker in that third quarter because his day was done. So now he can think about Ohio State, as can the rest of the Sooners now. Defensively, we mentioned that the opening drive, other than that, in which, you know, they were caught out of position a few times. You know, you got to imagine how nervous Kenneth Murray was, the middle inside linebacker. And I'd be nervous, too, as a true freshman starting in my first game. And, you know, but they adjusted after that. They, they adjusted fine. Neville Gallimore thought was terrific. I also, too, uh, was impressed, you know, with, with the play of Stephen Parker. Um, there was a, a couple of plays back-to-back -back, um, in the early going where Parker, from his safety position, cheated up and made a tackle with the line of scrimmage, and the next play was able to dislodge a pass that would have been the first down for the Miners near midfield, but broke it up, forcing a punt. So I thought Stephen Parker, now entering his final year, I thought he was sensational as well. And Caleb Kelly, you know, other than one penalty uh, that was unnecessary, I, I thought that he played good from his outside linebacking spot. And really, if you were to nitpick OU's defense, a couple of things would be that opening drive, but they made adjustments after that, and then some personal foul penalties, you know, which uh, Matt Romar picked up, picked up two of them. So those are silly things, but things that, you know, you can shore up. Um, defensively, again, other than that first drive, UTEP had very little success running the ball, and then uh, OU's pass defense took care of it, and we saw Gallimore actually come up with a, a tip pass at the line of scrimmage. So the Sooners um, not only dominant, but they got plenty of reserves in the game in that second half to contribute. Kyler Murray completed every pass except for one, as did Baker Mayfield. So you got to see um, a lot of those Sooners play and do something you know worth bragging about. But again, it's not a true measuring stick, ladies and gentlemen. 
on, on OU. Okay, we got to see them today. We got to see them play well, but you know it was one of the worst teams in college football in UTEP, and that's not to diminish OU's victory because they played well. They played terrific and decided this thing early. Um, but now next week at this time, we will know truly how good the Sooners are. That will be the ultimate measuring stick game, not only playing against an Ohio State team that beat them last year, but you got to play them on the road this time. And that front seven of Ohio State's, yeah, they're good. And the secondary, maybe Baker have some success against them. That was an area that Indiana exploited in that Thursday night game. And if you missed it, you know, I gathered two things from that game. Number one is that anything can happen in college football. And for those first two and a half quarters, Ohio State had their hands full. Not only, um, you know, battling tight, you know, against Indiana, which we didn't expect, but the Hoosiers actually were leading with about four minutes to go in the third quarter. And then the next thing you know, about 30 minutes later in real time, about 20 in game time, um, it's 49 to, what, 21, something like that. I mean, it was like a 29 nothing spurt by the Buckeyes. That tells me the other thing is that they could turn it on when they want to, and they still have big playability. So Kevin Wilson's offense is going to be a handful for the defense of Oklahoma. Got to get pressure on him. Of course, we'll talk more about this matchup you know, as we get closer to it early next week. They got to get more pressure um, on Barrett than they did last year. And then offensively, um, they have to rush for at least 120 yards. Okay, It can't be just all passing. They're going to have to show the ability to run against that terrific Ohio State um, defense. That will uh, be something because Indiana threw well against them but uh, had very little running success. I think they had like five or six net rushing yards against the Buckeyes. But we'll talk more about that matchup later on. Uh, Oklahoma State, Thursday night, it was only Tulsa, but the Cowboys are very loaded, especially at wide receiver. They looked impressive. Texas obviously overrated the start of the 2017 season. It's really too bad, you know, because Tom Herman, I'm sure they, they figure he's the right guy to make Texas a better program, and maybe it's just a, a one-game hiccup. But for right now, until proven otherwise, that's a new year, a new head coach, but it's still the same Texas. They're a mediocre squad, and Maryland was probably a little bit better than what we estimated. And, of course, uh, West Virginia plays Virginia Tech on Sunday. So there you have it right there, the Sooners. Opening day, first game ever for Lincoln Riley as head coach. And they not only pass the test, but they get A pluses. 56 7 over Texas El Paso to start 1 0. Of course, next week, maybe the game of the week in college football nationwide Sooners and the Buckeyes, the APs, two winningest teams ever. And they'll meet, but this time at the horseshoe. And let's hope it's a better result if you're a Sooner fan than what it was last year. But it was only. Texas El Paso, but really liked what I saw today at Gaylord Memorial 56-7. Boomer Center.